Guys, 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 there is a lot to go over today. Like, I genuinely thought we were mostly going to be talking about Russian test gates, maybe, which I believe only the St. Petersburg ones have gone through, or the fact that somebody literally attempted to burn down the Krustoni, the head of, well, I believe it's still the head, even though I don't know why, it's still the head of Dambo 70, um, the school which this rink is at, and commented on the fact that somebody literally tried to burn down the ice rink. And he says that he believes it could have been done by a crazy figure skating fan who maybe wasn't happy with the Atari ways um people if you watch my videos and you're the person who tried to burn down the Krusoni please don't <laughs> Please don't. You may disagree with someone, but do not attempt to burn down a training camp, all right? Thank you. But today's topic has turned a little bit more serious. Usually, I do talk about the fact that the Russian have very egregious and rough training habits in terms of nutrition, in terms of overtraining the girls, in terms of even the technique that they use to rotate their jumps. And I have talked about them at length. However, it's usually mostly just because they have the most drama, the biggest cast of characters, and the most high-profile people. I mean, the Russians dominate the sport in certain disciplines. However, reality is that figure skating is a very, very strenuous sport, no matter from where it comes from, whether it is the USA, Japan, or Russia. I mean, we've already seen allegations from the coach in Japan, Miyashimara, where Nobu, one of his students, who then later became like an assistant teacher i believe literally filed a lawsuit over abuse at the rink emotional and verbal abuse and then in the usa it is very well known just how it is in gymnastics that eating disorders run rampant when it comes to figure skating and that is all over the globe regardless of which school you come from which country you come from but today we are going to be talking about how the french team gabriela papadakis and guillaume ciceron the ice dancers who are actually the 20 22, the current reigning Olympic gold medalist for ice dance, had a documentary come out in French television, I believe, which has kind of brought to the surface a lot of things which we already knew, but really don't talk about enough because the Russians have all this dramatic soap opera style drama going on. But the reality is that the sport and every sport at high level for that matter has very little room for mental health because you are encouraged to put your body on the line for the team, especially if it is a team sport like it is an ice dance. And these ice dancers go to one of the biggest schools, the biggest school in the world probably for ice dance and one of the biggest schools for figure skating, which is the I Am school in Montreal, the International Academy of Montreal, I believe. And they are led by Marie Franz and Patrice Luzon, who are now a couple as well as were a competitive figure skater ice dance team. And they aren't heavily featured in terms of how they coach, like seeing how they treat their skaters, but Gabriela Paparakis, who has been known to be very open about her feelings and her mental health, was very raw and very vulnerable in this documentary revealing that she actually went through an abortion during the 2021 season and feels that the way her team, Marie France and Patrice Usson, as well as her teammate, Guillaume Cizeron, really lacked empathy when she came to them with the news that she actually took this decision upon herself to get an abortion for the better of the team. And this has brought a lot to the surface, the conversation about how mental health is truly ignored and almost seen as a burden and a nuisance when it comes to trying to achieve that Olympic dream. And this can be said for a lot of different sports, especially for sports which have high turnover like gymnastics and figure skating. And now I think we should look at the quotes that are on Twitter. And please note that these are translations from French to Russian to English. So something might have been lost in translation. Also want to give a shout out to their username is at T-E-G-O-M-A-S-S, -S, Tegomas, I believe is how you would pronounce it. And they provided a lot of clips from the movie as well as English translations, which I will be using today. And like I said, a refresher, Papadakis and Cizeron are very, very prominent team in ice dance. I mean, you could even argue one of the best ice dance teams of this century, of our generation. <laughs> VMEs don't come for me, Virtue and Moya are great, but Gabriela Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron are 
right there as well and the fact that they have come out with such a lengthy documentary i wish somebody will put out a fully translated version but even just the clips that we have seen today causing a lot of discussion in terms of how figure skating as a whole not just the russians is a very toxic environment that puts aside figure skaters well-being whether it be physical like we talk mostly with the russians or mental like we talk also a lot with the russians but in a global scale so let's read these quotes and see specifically what it is that Gabriela Papadakis has talked about at length and of course the revelation that she had an even that she even was pregnant not just an abortion but the fact that she got pregnant is insane during a season and that she's talking about it so openly and we need to support women to talk about their experiences when it comes to these things a lot of people can get taken aback and think it is almost ghastly and unbecoming to talk about this so publicly but we need to support women because this happens to a lot more women than we know so the very first thing that i saw on twitter was first of all people shocked about the fact that she even had an abortion and how much that takes a toll on your body and your mental and people were appalled at the fact that gabriela felt so just not supported by her team and her teammate when she came to them with these news and the way that she actually phrased it is very very just pitiful like it makes you feel sad and just kind of translates how lonely one could feel in a vulnerable moment like that. So this comes from at Gwen Dale, S-E-D-G-E-S-S. -E -S -S, and the quote that she chose to highlight is, I feel bad about this. I keep thinking, if Guillaume and the coaches knew that I couldn't get together, they would be furious. When it really got bad, I missed a worked out and they gave me some time to sort out my problems. Then they said, listen, if you're going to win the Olympics, you need to get yourself together. Otherwise, we're done. It was not said out of malice, but I was bad up against the wall then i decided to get well partly it worked if they noticed that i was falling back in my previous state it would alienate them but i promised that i would pull myself together i waited two weeks to confess to guillaume and the coaches the fact that she had an abortion she only said that she didn't have a choice deal with your problems was the answer issues related to mental health are still ignored in the sport environment <sighs> yeah so it's not painting a nice picture and it just an abortion within and of itself is such a terrible thing to go through through personally and to have to do it in a high tension environment like figure skating or any sport for that matter can really break down a person so the fact that she not only thrived as an athlete and won the gold medal and did it all for the dedication to the sport and her team kind of shows the person that Gabriela Papadakis is putting others in front of her and feeling like she has a sense of duty to the sport because she's been in it for so long I think they've been skating together nearly 20 years or 20 years just like Tessa and Scott did it seems like the documentary Gabriela just spent a lot of time just highlighting the problematic aspects of figure skating one is where they talk about the fact that the sport is really not diverse and when it tries to pull from other ethnicities or cultures it does it in the worst way possible because literally every judge is probably an old white man or old white lady who has no concept of diversity and so she says that when a theme like hip hop or urban, quote unquote urban, was chosen as the dance theme for the season, she got told, you look too white. And she said, well, yeah, there are many layers of problematic in there and I'm flabbergasted. It's cool to do something more modern and get inspired by other styles, but the way they ask us to do it. You know, in the US, they told the skaters they look too white. You have to dance black according to them. Do you know how problematic that is? Another part that she talks about is how in figure skating, presentation you know looking the part being the package basically for women looking pretty looking desirable looking conventionally pretty that is something they even touched on in the i Tonya movie gabby also touches on this saying i grew up in a sport where i had the impression that i was asked to be pretty and nothing else i remember the first time i addressed this in competition we had an official practice at 7 a.m and all the girls had to wake up at 3 a.m to do their makeup for the first time and it felt strange to me we're doing a sport why do all the boys get to wake up three hours after us and no one thought it was weird one guy looked at me straight in the eye and said well no the guy's job is to get muscle while the girl's job is to look pretty and present well for the team that's when i said oh all right okay and it was brutal because i thought what am i even doing here it seems that gabriela papadakis really found this documentary or maybe just even the documentary team the person behind the camera a vulnerable and safe enough space where she could actually air out all her grievances or maybe she knew that the documentary was going to be aired right after the olympics so regardless 
regardless of what happened, whether she won the gold or she didn't, which in the end she did, she wanted to put all her inner thoughts of the sport out there. And I don't blame her because the reality is that when you have spent, when you have given your life, such a large part of your life to a sport and you feel betrayed by the sport in so many levels not just on a personal level when it comes to her teammates and her camp but also on a level as a woman the fact that the sport is kind of built against you and built to put you in a box and nothing else if not you will fail i think it is important to her to put this out there and to tell her own personal experience of the sport there's been a lot of reactions of this of line a lot of people mostly discussing how toxic figure skating truly is and how it can be and comparing it to other sports like gymnastics who's kind of had already some sort of referendum when it comes to the culture and trying to rebuild it figure skating i think has yet to go through that mainly because most of the drama is kept on the russian side and the russians aren't even participating anymore let alone their cultural difference doesn't really let them see how problematic some of the things are and then on the american side i think the sport is not big enough to get the attention that it needs to have this kind of makeover because the makeover has to come from the demand of the crowd and I think the crowd right now is not large enough to have that sort of outrage so that the people in power feel like they need to burn it to the ground to build it all the way up and so it becomes still this very much toxic environment where skaters feel like they have to fit this mold which is a mold from 20 30 years ago and in sports in general the team comes first so you feel like you need to sacrifice your body there's so many movies about this sports movies about people just pushing their body whether it's mental health or physical health to an extreme where they are jeopardizing like dangerously like risking their life just for the sake of getting a medal not because they want that medal but because it has been drilled into them that their worth comes from this particular sport and the fact that figure skating has the additional component of presentation where it's a subjective sport where people are the ones who decide your fate not necessarily how well you performed but how you look if they liked you on that day if they didn't like you on that day it, it, like who can win at every competition is pretty arguable if everybody performs well and this season like i said because the ultra c elements are not going to be as as prolific because the russians are out then there's really a lot of room for argument and i think that gabriela did a really brave thing here and there is a very small subset of people who are angry at her or choosing to throw her teammate and her team under the bus in terms of speaking so vulnerably and just kind of saying that she felt alone and that she felt dejected and that she felt like she didn't get the empathy she deserved but I think that subset is very small and most people are just kind of reckoning with the fact that figure skating is a toxic sport and the fact that the most toxic people is really anyone like we talk about the Russians being toxic because they really don't try to hide it I mean as Harry said the other day that out of a 10 she thinks she's only a 3 in terms of toughness <laughs> like they they are not willing to see it they're not willing to recognize it in the US people will be held accountable if it is uncovered that they are abusing their power but to what extent can they be held accountable when the sport is so small that firing one coach means that there literally is no other coach to replace it so i think figure skating particularly in the u.s is at a very tight spot because they can't afford to lose more people even if it is for the greater good of the skater in france i don't believe figure skating is popular like in japan or korea i think france is also experiencing the same thing as the u.s where the sport is slowly decreasing even dying you could say meanwhile in korea and japan and russia the sport is big enough where where if people are held accountable, they can be easily replaced. But the fact that most people aren't held accountable, I mean, Mia Shimada, that is her name. My Hamada, oh my God, I'm so sorry. My Hamada, <laughs> not Mia Shimada, what the hell am I saying? Even in, Jap in a country like Japan, this top coach, My Hamada is still not truly being held accountable. She is still coaching, she's still out there. And I don't know exactly what the details of the lawsuit, but I believe that nothing truly came of it because she is still a top coach. 
language in Japan. So basically this documentary is out, more things might come out as translations keep coming, but the reality still stands that the toxicity of the sport is not limited to one country, it is not limited to one camp, it is a cultural problem of the entire sport that really needs to be looked at differently. And I think this next generation, if there even is a next generation because the sport popularity is dwindling globally, this next generation is the people who need to kind of start implementing the change and not just succumbing to the culture, which is why I really commend Gabriela Papadakis by speaking up because I do think this will implement some sort of change, whether it is globally or locally in France. I really do think that talking is the first step in implementing change. Additionally, like I said, someone tried to burn down the Krustolni, so like I said, try to implement change, but not that much. Regardless of arson, the Russians are still plowing ahead with Russian test gates. I believe only the St. Petersburg um, ones are out. Elizabeth Timisheva is still going strong. I don't know if this has anything to do with the fact that they're basically competing locally or nationally in Russia. So we genuinely don't know who would have retired if the competitions would still be allowing Russians to compete. And another thing that everybody noticed is that Alicent from House of the Dragon, if you're not watching House of the Dragon, you're missing out, looks exactly like the love of my life, Eugenia Mavirba. Like identical, like I can't believe I didn't think of it first. Like it, it, it's uncanny, <laughs> it's crazy. And that's basically all we have for now. The season is still gearing up. There are little competitions here and there, but it hasn't officially started. It. And now that we have this very serious conversation about the culture being very toxic and negative for the skaters, I'm really interested to see not just how maybe this might affect figure skating as a whole, but also what will the IM, the Montreal Ice Academy, respond with? Because this documentary is very raw, very French, very real, and it doesn't hold back. Gabriel Papadakis did not hold back, and I'm trying to see if Guillaume will give a statement or if... Actually, let me check his Instagram, right? No. Because Guillaume, I think, will have to give a statement. Um, I believe he might have already commented on the fact that it was completely her choice and that they did, didn't know beforehand, but let me double check. But I don't believe that Marie Franz or Patrice Busson or the Ice Academy itself has said any statement about it. But but it is very interesting to see how this is going to affect them because they have been often seen as the good guys. They were seen as like the cricket club for ice dancing, which if you are a fan from back in the day when, when Jenya was the princess of the ice and Yuzuru was the prince, back in the day the way the fans like to spin the narrative was the Atari camp team to Britza was bad and the cricket club were the good guys and they were competing against each other. But now the cricket club has kind of dwindled down in people. The I am, you know, Montreal Ice Academy me, they have kind of stepped up and become the model to follow and the quote-unquote good guys of figure skating and now this has kind of thrown a wrench in their reputation and maybe in their brand. So let's see, we do not know what's gonna happen. Let me check on Guillaume. Guillaume has yet to make a statement on his Instagram at least and from what I see the I Am Dance Academy has yet to make a statement either. I do believe that Guillaume and Gabby still have a very close and good relationship because that was not disputed in the documentary, but anything else and everything else about the culture of figure skating was definitely thrown out there for discussion. Let me know how you guys feel about this. It is still truly a shock to kind of find everything out and see how intense and kind of lonely and sad and depressing. It's, it kind of gave me Genya Mavirova Japanese documentary vibes. If you don't know, a documentary crew from Japan kind of recorded of Genya's turbulent journey to the 2018 Olympics and also documented a bit after with the shocking results and it gave the same vibe. The music was very eerie, very dissonant, very sad and lonely vibes and this one seemed exactly alike and it's shocking because this is a team that has seen very positively. This is a team that has good chemistry, that only talk well about each other. This is a team. Evgenia was battling on her own in an academy, camp, school, whatever you want to call it, that has a bad reputation, that has an infamous reputation for being hard on their students. So you would expect that. But I don't think people expected this one to be so real, so gloomy, so the exactly the same vibes. Like you would expect this to have a more positive spin just because of the perception that the this team and their camp has but it wasn't it was the same and it kind of makes me question if being a figure skater being an ice dancer being a singles lady whatever if being a figure skater period is 
worth it to stay in it for so long. But I do love the sport, I do love these people, and again, I'm very proud of Gabriela Papadakis for speaking her truth and putting the truth out there and being vulnerable for the world. And then I almost forgot Ilya Melanin landed the quadruple axle flawlessly in competition. A lot of people are happy about this. You can imagine a lot of fan news are not as happy about this. But the reality is that it is the first clean quadruple axle landed in competition. And we gotta give Ilya Melanin his flowers. He is the next superstar of men's figure skating in the USA. And this boy, I'm hoping, really hoping, can grow the sport because this boy is definitely going to keep the sport relevant and interesting for a newer generation. Loki hoping he joins TikTok because that is the easiest way to grow an audience. And I do think that the future of skating is in TikTok, at least for the current figure skaters and current figure skater creators. And that's basically that. Let me know what you guys think. Should the Krusoni be burned down? <laughs> if it was you, please don't tell me. Are you as proud of Gary Papadakis as I am? And should I review the Russian test skates once Moscow versions are out? Is that out? Please let me know. I am not completely sure. And as always, shout out to Karina, Katie, Leslie, Natalia, and my only boy left, Timothy. Hopefully, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.